Hi again, Cam McKay here. Today we're going to talk about the extensor tendons. The extensor tendons being on the posterior surface or the dorsal surface of the forearm. There are 12 of them and we're going to go through those 12, where they come from and how they cross over the wrist in a very important way. So let's get started. As I said, the extensor tendons occupy the dorsal posterior compartment of the forearm and there are 12 of them. This diagram here shows us very grossly the muscles from a superficial perspective and reflected some of that deeper musculature. This more diagrammatic representation shows the muscles a lot clearer. We can see a lot of them all arise from the same area around the lateral elbow and all pass distally in the forearm across the wrist here. This is the superficial layer and this is the deep layer of extensor tendons. As I said, there are 12 extensor tendons. One of them is actually a flexor at the elbow. The brachioradialis has a main action of flexing the elbow. It is most powerful when the forearm is slightly pronated and it's able to exert its effort into flexion. The others are extensors with two more exceptions the anconeus and the supinator. The anconeus is a small muscle arising from the lateral epicondyle which exerts a small amount of extension and abduction. The supinator, as its name implies, supinates or fixes the forearm in supination. The anconeus and supinator arise here, around the lateral epicondyle. So far, we have brachioradialis, anconeus and supinator. These are the non-extensors of the forearm compartment. All of the rest exert forces of extension on the wrist or the fingers or the thumb. The ECRL or extensor carpi radialis originates up with brachioradialis on the lateral supracondylar ridge. The next four muscles all originate from the common extensor origin. Extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, or also known as extensor digitorum communis, extensor digita minimi, and the extensor carpi ulnaris. This completes the superficial muscles. Deep to those, we have mostly the extensors of the thumb. The abductor, pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and extensor pollicis longus. In anatomy, when we hear pollicis, we know we're talking about the thumb. The other muscle is the extensor indices, or the index finger extensor. So they're the 12 muscles of the posterior or extensor compartment of the forearm. All of them run distally and across the dorsal aspect of the wrist. Here they're contained by a special ligament called the dorsal carpal ligament, also known as the extensor retinaculum. The extensor retinaculum holds the tendons against the dorsal wrist to allow for effective activity and biomechanical function. Here's a better diagram showing the tendons within their synovial sheaths passing underneath the dorsal carpal ligament on that dorsal aspect of the wrist. Here is a transverse section showing the extensors on the dorsal aspect of the wrist contained under the retinaculum and against the bone. Of interest, we'll recall from last time the volar structures and median nerve. In this instance, they're just about to pass through the carpal tunnel. This diagrammatic representation shows the extensor tendons passing across the dorsal wrist underneath the retinaculum. The retinaculum is divided up into six compartments. From radial to ulna here, compartment one, two, three, four, five, and compartment six. In compartment one, we have the APL and EPB tendons from the thumb. Remember the P stands for pollicis. Compartment two is ECRL and ECRB, the long radial wrist extensors. Compartment three is extensor pollicis longus. 
And compartment four is EDC, the communist tendons to the fingers, and EI. Five contains EDM to the little finger, and compartment six is the ulna wrist extensor, extensor carpi ulnaris. These are the six extensor compartments of the dorsal wrist. One further thing to discuss if we're discussing extensors is the anatomical snuff box. This anatomical feature is located on the radial side of the wrist at towards the base of the thumb. The snuff box is between the extensor pollicis longus and the APL EPB tendons. We can see that position here, extensor pollicis longus, APL EPB. This area here is the anatomical snuff box. The anatomical snuff box contains cephalic veins superficially, the superficial radial nerve, and then deep down below the tendons, the radial artery, and underneath that, bony landmarks from the radial styloid, scaphoid trapezium, and the base of the first metacarpal bone. The anatomical snuff box is a very busy area and is examined commonly for a number of reasons in medicine. Here we see that represented again, the snuff box with overlying it, the cephalic vein, superficial radial nerve and deep down radial artery. So that's a quick summary of the posterior, dorsal or extensor compartment of the forearm, the extensor tendons and how they pass across the wrist into the hand. We also discussed very briefly the six compartments and their contents as well as the anatomical snuff box. So quite a bit to take in there but a very interesting part of anatomy in the upper limb. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about a specific compartment. Compartment 1 with the APL and EPB tendons to the thumb. And we'll talk about a very common condition that occurs within compartment 1. We'll see you then.